ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get started. Hello. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Uh, my name is Megan McCauley. I'm the Outreach Director for the Hollywood Fringe Festival, so welcome. If I haven't met you guys yet, I'm shocked. And if uh, I'd hopefully, please introduce yourselves after the workshop tonight. So welcome to the fourth and final HFF 16 workshop. This is How to Tech Your Fringe Show. So you're going to learn all about tips and tricks for teching at Hollywood Fringe. Um, I want to say thank you to Sacred Fools for having us tonight. Um, Heather is not in the room, but thank you to Sacred Fools. We really appreciate you hosting us. Um, we do have some other staff here tonight. We have Dave outside in the foyer working on the Fringe Guide as we speak. We have Matt currently taking a picture of me. Um, and we have some awesome volunteers throughout front, so thank you to them as well. Um, this session, like all the others, is being filmed and live tweeted. So um, for those of you at home, Catch us on the twitter.com website. And um, for everyone else, especially Brandon and Corwin, we are going to film this and put it on the internet. Um, after this, we are going to have a mixer at Three Clubs, which, as you know, is our one of our favorite watering holes just across the street. Um, we also have another opportunity for you to be drinking about Fringe on Wednesday for office hours. I know some of you guys have been attending those. Um, office hours are very casual mixers for everyone to get together, have a drink, get to know each other. Um, and this Wednesday, we will be at Black Bar. That is on El Centro and Santa Monica, just down that way. They're opening an hour early just for us. So wow. ju I know. Um, and they're going to run a special wear with a fringe name tag, and I will have these on Wednesday. You get a dollar off everything there. A whole dollar off everything there. Thank you, Black Bar. We love you. Um, we are currently offering registration scholarships for participants meeting specific criteria. If you've seen this in our newsletter, um, those criteria include expanding local audience, like extremely local Hollywood neighborhood audience, and or bringing more ethnic diversity to festival participants. So you can read about that on hollywoodfringe.org slash blog. That is for people who are currently registered in the festival. You can get your registration fee reimbursed if you fit these certain uh, criteria. We are also currently voting on themes for the Hollywood Fringe Prom. We hold a prom every year, just like good theater people are apt to do. Um, you can check at Hollywood Fringe on Twitter for the poll. We have four themes that are in the running. Right now, Purple Rain has a pretty strong lead, but go cast your vote and make your, uh, make your voice count. We also have our final Twitter chat a week from tonight. It's on May 16th. Um, it's at 2 p.m. If you're on Twitter, join us online for about an hour. Stacy Jones Hill will be moderating that conversation and use the hashtag HFF16 to join. You can always write to us at support at hollywoodfringe.org. We are always there. Our turnaround time is usually 24 hours or less. If you have any questions about anything in the festival, how to use something on the website, dates, times, if you just need advice, feel free to write us. Uh, that is open to you at any time. So I think that's all the announcements. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our two, I guess they're not really panelists because I'm not going to talk anymore after this, but um, our presenters tonight, they are seasoned fringe veterans. They've done many, many different things in the festival. And they are going to present to us tonight about how to tech your fringe show. So please give a round of applause for Brandon Baruch and Corwin Evans. <laughs> Hi guys! Hello. How's it going? Welcome to our How to Take a Fringe Show workshop, workshop number four. Um, as Megan mentioned, we are Fringe veterans. We've been doing this. Uh, I've been with Fringe since year one. Corwin, when did you start with Fringe? Year one. Year one. Um, uh, we have between us done, what do we do the count? Is 237 Fringe shows? <laughs> 238. Uh, so, what we, uh, what we want to help you with today is giving you all the information you need to get the most out of your tech time doing the Hollywood Fringe Show. Because we both believe that just because a Fringe Festival has a restricted <coughs> schedule does not mean you cannot achieve a lot of uh, design and technical elements if you properly plan and properly execute. And that is what we're going to help you with today. For those playing the at-home game, you can use that QR code if it will even scan on an angle. That was a little bit of a last minute throw together, but this is our Google Drive, which anyone with the link can view. We have the PDF that we'll be reading or referring to. You don't really need to read it because we're funnier live. And uh, 
trust me, we are eventually. And uh, pictures of all the things that I'll be bringing up as we go, so you can pop on there, download them. We've By also the, got- the uh, end of the night, we'll post a link to this on the Hollywood Fringe um, show page that you use to reserve tickets. So if you go back to that link, you can follow this link. Everything we discussed today will be in that Google Drive mm -hmm. and not blurry. Yeah, that, that one blurry spot, that's not actually the way it is in the Google Drive. You don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Remind me to tell you more about how fun it is to not have to deal with video on your show, even yeah. though I'm a video designer. Oh yeah, who are we? What well, are we uh, I'm Brandon Baruch. I am a lighting designer, a playwright, and a director. I have done all three, as well as producing the Hollywood Fringe Festival. Um, who are you? I'm Corwin Evans. I'm a failed comedian, but an <laughs> excellent designer. It's <laughs> your first big laugh. I know. I think, I think we're, getting, we're getting warmed up. So let's dive into this stuff. All right. Content. Corwin. Yes. I'm doing a fringe show this year. Are you? Yeah. Wow. What does my show need? Oh, buddy. So, what does your show need? This is a stupid question, but it's a genius question. It's like a Zen Cohen. What do I really need? Have you taken a full inventory of all of the stuff that you want? If this inventory is longer than five pages, run screaming and start paring down. You have a really 15 minute load in, load out. And we're gonna keep hitting that as we go. Even less is better. Who here has done a Fringe show before in the Hollywood Fringe? Okay, so a couple people. Who here has done so, a show in any, any Fringe festival? So a couple, a couple uh, other festivals. I know that different festivals have different, um, different ways of operating their techs, but uh, there, across the board, the general rule of the Fringe tech is there's not as much time as you like, right? We can agree on that. No, rule one is, Never make someone late to another show. Yeah, that's true. That is the cardinal rule. That is the one you must respect because whether you are going long in time, whether you're going long in setup or loadout, there are people that have that adjudicate the award, the, uh, various awards, a myriad <laughs> awards. I left the up off just for you. And uh, they want to see as many shows as they can. There are people who are scheduling their time so tight that they have five minutes to get from one theater to another. It's really quite fun to watch. So but you have great ambitions. You want to do a really technically fantastic show, and you have three hours to do it. First thing you want to do, as we were saying, take an inventory. And we're talking every design department that your show is going to interact with. So prop lists have a written list of every prop you're using. Scenery lists. Any scenery you're bringing in, be it a table, let's say you have some soft goods that you're coming in, if you have a specific piece, have it on paper, have an Excel sheet. Lighting cues, sound cues, and video cues if you choose to do video. You do not want to wait until you get to your tech to figure out what you need in terms of lighting, sound, and video. And a lot of what we're going to talk about today is how to prepare lighting, sound, and video cue sheets so that when you enter your tech, you are instantly prepared to um, dive in and start programming your show file. For the people who have done this before, especially from other fringe festivals, you already know you're not producing just one show. With, with all hopes, you're going to extend and you're going to continue perhaps in town or go on tour after this. You, you might not, you personally, whichever one of you just is doing a fun thing whatever. That's cool. No judgment. Do something weird and fun. Awesome. But the more you write down and prepare and archive and keep a hold of, the easier it is for you to continue to a next step somewhere else. It helps everybody out. Yeah. Uh, Corwin, mm -hmm. I'm doing a fringe show this year. How are you? What should I expect from my venue? If only I had a handy list that I could look at, which you look at it as well. Realistically, a basic speaker system. Here they are. I think they're eons. I clocked them earlier, and I lost track of where they were. Yeah, they're in the back. Yeah. Um, JBL Eon, perfectly serviceable. Um, you can expect a rep plot or repertory plot of lighting, which is these actually brilliantly silent fixtures overhead. Yeah. Top pole sacred force. Uh, a repertory plot is a lighting plot that is designed for multiple uses. And so it is fair to expect from your venue that they will have a full front wash of lighting for the stage. Um, ideally, there should be a color system or two, backlight or top light or side light. 
but it is, it is a legitimate expectation that your venue should have enough lighting to properly cover the stage and create moves. This does not mean that you're going to get specials necessarily. You're not going to be able to have a square of light over here for your dramatic monologue or a, a fish gobo over there. Those might not happen, but you should at least have enough lights that you're able to create different moods which will help you to tell the story of the play of light. And not just that, but also a house light system, which is different every place that you're in, but that allows you to begin the show by taking them away. Um, that's pretty standard. Yeah. I don't know anybody that's doing it this year without that. Um, in terms of basic scenic elements, it's going to vary, vary venue to venue whether or not they will have chairs, uh, tables, other items that you might need. They might have rehearsal blocks. Um, the great thing about the Hollywood Fringe Festival is that we have some of the best venue operators in the country. Mm -hmm. And this is spoken as someone who has done one other Fringe Festival. But I love our venue operators, and everyone by this point should have a, a point of communication with the venue where you're working, right? Everyone has someone they've been emailing back and forth. It is absolutely your prerogative as a fringe goer to talk with your venue and to find out what they have. If they cannot give you an answer as to what they can provide, then they, they need to. So bug them until they do. But they will. Uh, if you do not check beforehand to see what your theater is providing, and you walk in and the thing that you were hoping for isn't there, it's on you. Like a projector. Yeah. That's a real bummer if you've got all your stuff in a line and you're like, man, I, I hope this projector doesn't break right before we do our little show to get that. that you know it's a, a, a wacky, wacky coincidence is how our projector broke right before you guys arrived. And we yeah. pulled this one out of the attic. Um, and that's... Hence, hence uh, This is, I'm just going to do a sidestep on video right now. Yeah. We are very hostile towards video design and fringe in this little funny little write-up that we did. Not, neither one of us really believes that necessarily. We, I've worked on shows as a video designer that was really cool. We could explore the notion of scenic elements and use it theatrically to create a backup dancer that someone could dance alongside. That stuff is awesome. But you only have a few hours to throw together everything, and video is the biggest time suck you could ever meet in the world, except possibly for like high intensity, like button stuff. What's the one with the clothes that the people wear? Costuming. That's Excellent. it. Um, Which we also uh, did not cover. We Sorry, will come guys. back to this a uh, couple times, probably throughout the evening. Uh, we really discourage you from using video unless you are. 100% prepared to do video. If you have an idea for a slideshow behind your piece that you think is kind of a nice added element, think about it if you really need it. Um, fun anecdote, last year um, there was a guy who came to our workshop and we gave this exact spiel uh, and he was doing a, a one-man show and he was planning on using a video element and he chose not to and we both went to see his piece and it was fantastic and um, we talked with him after and he said, you're right, it didn't need to be there. Um, Video is a huge headache, but if you want to use it, stay in your seats because we will give you some advice on how to. Mm -hmm. um, hey, speaking, Brandon. Yes. What should I expect a space not to have? Well, Corwin, short answer, <laughs> anything your show needs. Um, <laughs> if you absolutely have to have a projector or a disco ball or like a kiddie pool full of jello or a mannequin or a basketball hoop, um, it's probably not going to be in the theater. Um, if something is imperative to your show, make sure you have a source for it. If the venue says they project it, or uh, they provide it, if the venue says they provide a projector, you see where my brain went? <laughs> Set eyes on it. Don't believe anything about anything until you see it in the air. And I'm not saying the venues are lying to you. I'm not, because these venues are fantastic. The venue operators are fantastic. Especially but, sacred fools. What, what? <laughs> yeah. But that said, just walk into the space and say, okay, those are those lights you told me, there's where that projector is, this is the adapter I need. Go there early and, and bring the adapter you think you need and plug it in and see if it adapts. Because if you need an adapter and you don't have that adapter, you're not going to get that adapter in time to adapt. Mm -hmm. um, Incidentally, yeah. we're, uh, this, that was sort of a blanket statement, but I'm going to break it down to be even more specific about it. There may not be a playback system for your audio there, 
They probably have a CD player. They most likely have an eighth inch headphone jack that could plug into an iPad or phone or laptop computer with QLab, which we'll get to. But um, that kind of basic stuff doesn't always exist. It's like a soundboard that hooks up to speakers. That's about it. Um, Some people like to have consumable props, uh, food stuff in their show, mm -hmm. which is great because theater is wonderful. Um, Make sure the space has a refrigerator. Yeah. For example, for example, if you need something for your show, if there is a thing that your show cannot operate without, make sure you have it. Mm -hmm. um, this can include computer power cables, chargers, basic office supplies, stage masking, black fabric, if you have a reveal or something like that. Better to just go and grab one from the fashion district downtown, make sure that it fulfills your needs. Cleaning supplies, if you've got a real nasty show or there's something involved with that, like uh, say I have a mirror that is quite filthy at the top of the show and I would like to clean it to symbolize my path in my own journey of self-recognition. Two years ago I saw a fringe piece, uh, I, I saw a dance piece, we were being deliberate and not naming past fringe shows to stay impartial as staff members, but I saw a piece uh, a gorgeous dance piece in which they threw baby powder in the air and it sparkled in the light and they romped around in it and it really, it actually moved me to tears. It's one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. My show was on the stage after. Oh. And the stage was covered in baby powder and we had to wait while they mopped it all up. So just, if you're going to do that, do that. Fringe is about experimentation. It's about telling stories your way and nothing should be off the table. But if your show is going to make a mess of any sort, know how to clean it up, practice cleaning it up, time cleaning it up, and if you cannot clean it up in the amount of time you have to get out of there to let the next person in, reconsider that element, is my suggestion. You can be sure that at least one time, it will go not well, and you will have to do the longest version of cleanup that you've ever timed. Yeah. Um, in the New York Fringe Festival, the venue managers, uh, it, one of the rules of the festival is that during your tech time, you have to run your load in and load out. They start you on the street with all of your stuff. The venue manager puts a stopwatch and then times you loading in, and you have to do it in 15 minutes. And if you do not, they will make you cut things until they can get you there. The Hollywood Fringe does not have that rule because every venue runs separately. Um, every venue has their own rules, but self-policing is a really nice courtesy that you can do. Because remember that you are one show in, how many, Megan, how many shows do we have this year? About 300. You're one show in 300. <laughs> and what a spectacular honor to be a part of this community and to get to play with all these people. But you have to respect all the other people who are coming and doing work that is just as important to them as it is to you. Corwin. Yes, Brandon. I'm doing a fringe show. Are you? Are you really? What should I prepare ahead of time? You should prepare everything a stage manager might need to run your show for you. And what does that entail? Basic cue sheets, scene change assignments, prompt book, backups, backups. Uh, backups. <laughs> uh, does everyone here know what a cue sheet is? It's okay if you don't. Does anyone here not understand the concept of a cue sheet? I'm going to teach you what a cue sheet is. Okay. You know what's fun is even if everyone here knew I was going to teach you anyway, so. Uh -huh. um, uh, show, the, um, show the other one first, because I don't think we use this a lot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. No, that's a sample. Show the, show the dance cue sheet. Dance cue sheet. All right. A cue sheet is a list of all the cues that you're going to have. <coughs> can you all see this? Can you tell? Can you see, does everyone see this? Is this kind of crummy for your side? It's very smudgy, but all of this is on the Google Drive. So you can look at it, and edit it, and download it, and mess with it, and write your own. This is a lighting design cue sheet. Uh, this is a template that I created based on some dance pieces I've done. And let's break down the information contained within. <clears throat> cue number is the most important thing. When you are programming your light cues, you are going to give them numbers. Each cue is a separate look. So if you have a nighttime scene, that could be Q2. If the next look is a uh, blue light for a scene change, that is going to be Q3. If the next, uh, the next Q is uh, a special downstage right for a monologue, that can be Q4, etc. Every time you like to change, that's going to be a Q. 
Likewise for sound and video. Anytime you change, that's a cue. So that is what a cue is on this sheet. And also, this file itself is on the drive. I encourage you to download it, delete my stuff, adapt it any way you see fit, um, use it as you like. This is a sample dance piece, but it works just as well for theater. Here I describe the piece. So, if I were doing a play, I could, instead of the name of the dance piece, say scene one, scene two, scene three. Here is my cue number. This is the number of the cue that I'm going to program. This is the moment. When I say moment, what I'm talking about is when does it happen. So, this is because this is a dance piece. Um, scroll down a bit to see if we have a more complicated one. She right, falls so to ground. So, uh, second song starts. I'm calling a new like you. She falls to ground. That's a piece of choreography. So, when I see that piece of choreography, I'm calling a like you. Zero second blackout at the end of the piece, blackout. If you are doing a play, you can put the lines there instead. Oh, I remember this piece. Great dance company I did this for. Um, you can also, in the moment, say the lines. So you can say, character, uh, colon, quote, I have to go now, I don't like this anymore, period. And that is your cue. Why is it important to generate a document like this? Because. When you get into your space and you have to program all of your light cues in about a half an hour, you want to have as much information readily available as you can. If you are already familiar with basic lighting design, you don't have to be an actual designer, you don't have to be a programmer, but you know the basic concepts, you can put as much detail in here as you want. So in the timing thing, if you know that you want the lights to come up on a five second count, put it in there. If you know, yeah, I'm sorry. That's how he does it. I feel like this. True story. Mm -hmm. um, if you know that a cue wants to be blues and cool light, put it in your description. Say this is a cool cue. If you have seen your venue's rep plot and you know how to understand it, and you have the um, faculty to be more detailed, you can say this cue channels one through five medium intensity, channels six and seven high intensity, channels nine and ten low intensity. Or you can just pay one of us to do it. Yes. Oh, that's, that's another part of this, guys. This is like super legit. This is super, super legit. We think that you should be able to do everything you need in tech. Mm -hmm. If you are not inclined, if you don't want to deal with it, we are available for hire to design shows. We usually do nine or ten a year. We love to do it. We offer very affordable rates. So that's a separate discussion. But hopefully, if we do our job right in this Workshop, you shouldn't need us to do it. Um, so, as you populate your cue sheet, you are giving yourself information so that when you sit in the theater at the light board, working either on your own or with the venue provided stage manager, depending on the venue. Um, I believe this year that most venues come with stage managers now, which is great. So, you don't need to speak lighting, you need to speak mood. And if you say to your stage manager, all right, I need my front lights at half intensity, I need some glutes coming from the side, they'll do it for you. And you just go through and you say, please call that Q4, great, record. Please call that Q5, great, record. Bam, the cues are done. Now what would a stage manager need out of one of us? Well, I'll tell you something, Corwin. <laughs> uh, stage manager isn't gonna know what the heck that document means. Because they don't know your play. They don't know your story. They're gonna need a script. So, we need to create a prompt book. Here's a sample prompt book. It's called sample prompt book for those following at home. Here's a sample prompt book that did not <coughs> copy over the cues. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a version of the PDF that has the cues on it? I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll update that. All right. All right, guys. I've got time to do it. I'm pretty sure that, um, I'm pretty sure that, that if viewed through a different program, you can see all the cues that I threw on this. Yeah. Um, open up this document again. Let me see what happens if I open it here. Uh, oh, that's fine. Uh, again, you guys, I really want to emphasize the importance of proper preparation. Uh huh. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah. We'll do one. Um, just do a live one. Oops. All right. Spoilers. A prompt book. If properly prepared, <laughs> should give all should give your stage manager all the information she or he needs to call your show blind. 
And by blind, I mean with no advanced preparation. Now, that does not mean that you can expect them to get the timing perfectly. There are very likely going to be moments that you're going to have to explain. But the more information you can give them ahead of time, the better. If you hand them a script and say, OK, when this line happens, I think I want likely to have it here. And now they have to write it down. Ooh, they're going to hate you. And we're going to talk in a little bit. We're going to talk in a little bit about how important it is for them to not hate you. But you're going to take a script. You're going to circle the line where you want your light, sound, or video cue to happen. Draw a circle. And you're going to draw a line over to the side of the page. And you're going to write LX for lighting, SQ for sound, V for video, or whatever you choose to call it. As long as yeah, it's consistent. Yeah. Make sure it's consistent and relatively intuitive. Sound cue too. So right here, stage manager's reading this. Stage manager says, OK, when she presses play on her iPod, I'm going to call sound cue too. You prefer LX. Uh, I don't. I'm a lighting designer. I just say cue. <laughs> <laughs> All their cues are other things. Uh, also, the the standard um, for video is a uh, tab for whatever reason. I'm sure it has something to do with slides back in the day. I didn't know that. They just say tab, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But oops, people call it video cue. It's, it's whatever you want to call it. If it's all running off of QLab and you're triggering your light board with MIDI, you could just call it QLab cue. Whatever makes the most sense to so somebody who did it. Right here, this is a really fantastic script if you haven't read it. The playwright is incredibly neat. Uh, let's say I want to like you to be called on this board grapes. I'm going to circle grapes. Which, where's grapes? Oh, Fox and the Grapes. There's a lot of grapes. Well, I remember that bit. This one? Yep, that grapes. Awesome. Uh, I hardly recommend that you do this in pencil and not on your computer. Um, yeah, because sometimes it doesn't transfer. <laughs> yeah. But that said, if you have the time and the, and the, um, and the, time and the inclination, the cleaner the better. If you do it in pencil and you make a mistake, make sure it's erased well. Make sure there aren't errant scribbles. Great. So look at that. We're going to give them a little bit of information. Um, let's say after she says the word grapes, that she takes an extra beat, and I don't want the lights to change until that beat. I could actually say, regs up parentheses, wait beat. You are still in your tech going to go through this prompt book with your stage manager and with your actors on the stage. And you are going to do what's called a cue to cue, which we will discuss shortly. Mm -hmm. The more information you can give your stage manager ahead of time in this book, the smoother things will go. Now, two more words to the wise. Binders are your friends. <coughs> if you're lucky enough to have a stage manager in rehearsals, give them a chance to run the show in advance. This probably won't happen this year because most of the venues have their own stage managers, yeah? Mm -hmm. But um, if you have someone that you're working with to be your operator and you can, you can put all of your sound cues together in advance, especially if it's movement synchronization heavy or if you're doing video or if there's, I did a show two years ago where the actors were in control of all the, the lighting fixtures and so forth. They, they were all kind of coming out of the costumes or they were being held. So that, they were rehearsing with those props for weeks just to make sure that they had everything locked down. You still have a couple weeks, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, you could do this this week and then start playing with stuff. Yeah. Not bad. A, a, a personal bugaboo for Brandon <laughs> is prompt books that do not have page numbers. If you do not put page numbers on your script, you are a shitty person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which again speaks to the larger point of the more information you can provide, the better. If you want a reference, I want to say, hey, I want to look at that thing on page 15. If I say to my stage manager, hey, I want to look at that thing in scene three, she doesn't know where scene, th where scene three starts. She's going to flip through the whole thing looking for scene three. So page numbers. Mm -hmm. Do that. It can help to have a but table of contents word. at the beginning of your script, too. But you know, however much paperwork you really want to do. Likewise, if you're my student, and none of you are, but I have some, put page numbers on your essays. I hate them. Um, <laughs> all right. That's a prompt book. Uh, Corin, mm -hmm. why don't you tell them a little bit about how to work with a venue manager, or oh a stage manager. Oh my goodness, there's really, just be nice, be nice. They have got hours that they are locked in a tiny, cramped, hot booth that smells probably of their own doing, but 
Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go? You have, it's, the, it's like refugee status stuff. Sorry if anyone's doing a show about refugees. I understand that's by the top of my Just put that anywhere. And basically, if you're not the worst person they have to see today, they'll probably be happy to see you. If you are the coolest person and you're just friendly and nice and patient, if you get like if you have to get in five minutes late because the person who should be here listening to this is at home right now catching up on Game of Thrones a day late, thank you very much, <laughs> then you're the one that comes in and makes it better because you can save that mood. This person's got five, six shows a day. Uh, the venue stage managers work really spectacularly long shows. They will often arrive at midnight and work through midnight or 1 a.m., usually only taking one real break per meal. Uh, it, it behooves you to be sensitive to that, that these people... It's interesting because venue stage managers are only, have only really become prevalent in the Hollywood fringe in the last two or three years. There was a major shift in the direction of, of, of how venues operate. Uh, Cora and I both think that venue stage managers are a fantastic addition to uh, the style of fringing we do here in the Wood of Holly. Um, I'm not going to sugarcoat this, bribe them, bring them snacks, uh, bring them cookies, bring them chocolates, bring them alcohol. Um, within I mean, reason. Within reason. But, uh, but seriously, a nice gesture will do a lot. These are people who take this job not for the money, because then you can stage managers do not get paid a lot, as you know, because your fee, their fee is probably included in your um, theater rental, so you know what they're making. So think about, understand the fact that they do this because they love it and because it's fun and because they want to participate in the festival. But a gesture goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And if you are nice to them, they will be nice to you. And if you have something go disastrously wrong and you need to come in at 2 a.m. to retake a moment because you ran out of time, they're not going to let you do that if you were uh, uh, um, a jerk to them. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to point out, this is, this is only uh, like level three facetious. Last year, we advised our uh, crew that they should, Corwin knows we're going to talk about this, he's like, you shouldn't say this, I'm not going to say this. We advised our uh, crowd that they should bribe um, the venue managers with alcohol. Their favorite. Their favorite alcohol. And a lot of bottles of alcohol were given. Like, <laughs> a lot of bottles of whiskey yeah. were flowing through the festival, and it was fantastic. And I just want to point out, I just want to throw it out there, Corwin and I also really like whiskey. So, if you are giving out whiskey to people who you like at the festival, we're going to be at Fridge Central pretty much every day. If this was it all helpful for you, if we, if we gave you any information, we, I'm just saying we like whiskey. We'll share it. We'll yeah. share it. We're cool. Um, yeah, there was one dude who had more than he could carry by the end of tech process. It was so awesome. Yeah. Um, Let's play our iPad staring game for another five minutes, because okay. that looks really good on stage. I want to point out a couple of small things, just um, as a lighting designer, these are often overlooked, so it's worth noting. Um, don't forget the bookends, lighting and sound-wise, of your piece, specifically pre-show lighting and sound, curtain call, curtain call music if you choose some, post-show lighting. So when you're creating your cue sheet, Q1 should be pre-show. Pre-show for the uninitiated is what exists in the space when you walk in. In our case, it was an endless loop of uh, the girl from Ipanema um, at General Wash. But uh, as, as a designer, I can also say that pre-show can do your show a great service to help the audience get into the mood before the show starts. You shouldn't waste a lot of time considering it, but the proper song and the proper lighting look when the audience comes into the theater will let them know what kind of show you're doing, and we'll kind of transport them into the world of your piece before you start. Ideally, it's like five minutes. Yeah. Like by the time you move in the house, it's five to ten minutes. People don't have to wait that long. Yeah, and then curtain call. You're going to want people to take a bow, make sure that you have a separate light cue after your blackout for that, and then another light cue for people to walk out. Just things to put in your list. I just realized that we never actually mentioned we will be able to ask or receive asked questions if you have fallen behind at this point. Oh, this yeah. is a good moment. If you've got something rattling around in the back of your head, feel free to bring it up at the end, or we'll be having office hours after this. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we, will, we will A all your cues after we've done our spiel. Mm -hmm. 
Well, it looks like the next bit is all you, Boo. Oh my, it's sound time. Uh, anyone know about QLab? Yeah! That's awesome. <laughs> it revolutionized everything, didn't it? You can download this free piece of software for your Mac computer. If you are PC, stay with me. I'm not going to leave you behind. Um, it is available at figure 53. Am I right about that? It's written right in front of me. Why am I blanking on that? It always happens. Figure53.com slash QLab, or you can just go to figure53.com and see what other stuff they've got. They've got a lot of cool projects. Uh, there is a product. page in our document that will have every link we discuss. And even better than that, in the Google Drive, Oh, what's this? That's QLab for mountain lion and up. That's QLab for leopard. For those of you running the OG OS X. There you go. And so then, you need to go to Figure 53. You can download the software directly from our drive. Mm -hmm. I've got a mirror. It may not be the most recent, so definitely uh, update it once you get it. But they're constantly pushing updates, so it's great. The QLab free version lets you do two channels of audio and one channel of video. It also lets you not fade video. So if you are doing a slideshow, probably your better bet is to do PowerPoint. I also have a free version of PowerPoint in the notes for the document. It's, by, it's through OpenOffice. I forgot what it's called. I don't use it personally, but it's totally free and you can mess with that. Uh, if you are a Windows person, hard luck. My goodness. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I keep both. There's a software called Multiplay. And uh, that is available through a much less easier to remember link that is inside this package. Um, it is, is anyone familiar with SFX? Cool. Take that, SFX. I had to program in you for hours, and it is not awesome. Wait, that's going on the internet, isn't it? <laughs> SFX is great. Everybody's cool, and I love them. No, it was not great. And. Um, this is much like SFX. It's kind of like a spreadsheet that you can drag and drop things into. This is QLab. This is the girl from Ipanema. That's as simple as it is. I push the space bar, Q goes. How wonderful is that for someone who has no idea what your show is? You just push the space bar, the Q goes, and you just advance it going through as need be. You can push the big friendly go button, you can go into show mode, and there's an even bigger, friendlier go button. If you have to, you can stop with a graceful fade. That is legit, right? So. <clears throat> I, I think that I can say with some adamance that if you have pre-recorded sound cues and do not use a free sound control software, you are, you are shooting yourself in yeah, don't use iTunes. Don't use iTunes. It's such a bummer because you never really know for sure how long it's going to take and it will take over to the next track or oops, you left it on random because you had a party the night before to celebrate your awesome friend show and then it's playing some weird voice memo that you left for yourself in 1987. <laughs> if everyone here was alive that young, uh, long, I'm not quite sure. But, uh, yeah. um, and it's not just Mac or PC. Figure 53 has Go button for iOS. And all you do is plug that into your soundboard on your phone, bless you, or your iPad, and then boom, that works. Um, there's an Android one I haven't really play tested yet, but there's a couple different ones, and they let you make fairly small shows, perfectly good enough for French. Like, there are so many options out there. <clears throat> um, I, I, I want to put something out as, as, as a humble award-winning lighting designer, playwright, director, and producer. Um, <laughs> I, I think that I, I, I think that it is important no matter what your, uh, what your role or direction is. If you are a writer, if you are a director, I think that everyone can benefit from thinking in terms of design. And so this software, um, basic lighting control, and I, this is not even for fringe, this is like my opinion in general theater making. The more you understand what lighting and sound and video can do for a show, the better you can enable your own work to rise above. So, if you're saying I'm just I'm just a playwright, I'm putting on my play, I don't know about this stuff. I, I I would I would really recommend that you play around with it because not only is it is it very intuitive software, um, it it might help you start thinking of new ways to tell a story when you start gaining a stronger understanding of how 
sound works in a dead voice. Mm -hmm. And you can experiment now. Like, you can start building it into your chef. Uh, there's a list of where you can pick up a whole bunch of free, <coughs> can you see it? It's a little small. It's in the document, too. Um, there's five different options here. You can also just search online, because Google is a thing that everyone's aware of now. And I also have a link to Audacity. If you haven't heard of it, it's a freeware sound editor that is completely cross-platform. That's right. I'm getting back to you Linux person in the room, possibly underneath the stage waiting for everyone to leave so we can come out and have a nap on the stage. But that Linux, too, it will it's a board. board. <coughs> you guys, we're, we're going there. We are bashing Linux. Just coming in hot. <laughs> Hey Corwin, as a humble award-winning blah blah blah, what a dad! Award story. nominated, award nominated. <laughs> <laughs> At least I was there. Yes. Um, what adapters do I need to make my sound stuff work? Good question. It's in the document. Now, I right here, I have just your humble commoner garden variety eight-inch headphone jack. I'm totally blowing out the video. That's awesome. To RCA which then plugs into my little tiny amplifier and my Goodwill speaker, of which I got like four for 10 bucks. And that's totally a thing if you want to throw some effect speakers out there. These GP guys are battery powered. You can get them on Amazon for like 15 bucks. And then that's just whatever you find at the Goodwill right up the street. I actually grabbed one, cracked it open, and took the little element out and stuck it inside a ground phone on a show earlier this year. It's awesome. Um, but one of those is probably good. Because your, your venue soundboard probably has RCA inputs, that's those guys. And it might have quarter inch, which you should probably think about getting. Just have a look at what the input is. They usually have a little cable there, so you can plug in your phone or whatever, because they're kind of used to that by now. Yeah. Um, prepping a show computer. You are going to be using your laptop to run your sound and possibly video because you heated our advice, mm -hmm. and aren't you happy you did? Yeah. Let's take a couple of seconds to talk about smart things to do to your computer before you enter your tech. Mm -hmm. Disable your screensaver. Turn it off. Just turn it off. If you have a password lock, get rid of it. I mm -hmm. cannot tell you how many times we've been a thing where the person who owns the computer steps away, it locks, no one knows the password, and yakety stack starts playing as people run around <laughs> trying to figure it out. Um, what else? Power options. There's a lot of energy saving optimization stuff that is sort of dependent on which computer you run. Basically, you want to make sure that your computer will not automatically go to sleep. Because if it is asleep, then so is your ship. Um, you can turn that off in the battery management, power management. Um, I don't know what it is on Linux. Sorry, guys. I thought I was going to support you, but not really. If you don't plug in your computer, I don't care if you have a fresh one and you trust your battery. If you don't plug your computer into a hard power source, that's where you show you deserve what you get. Um, you always run out of battery power like 10 minutes before the end of the show. It's such a bummer. And that said, uh, when you're doing your venue walkthrough, uh, it is very unlikely that venue wouldn't have a power source in the booth for you to plug your computer in. But again, never check. Mm -hmm. Notifications. I suggest you turn off your Wi-Fi altogether. Mm -hmm. If you have a thing that dings every time you get an email, uh, if you're running a soft sound queue and the ding blows out your speakers, that's not going to make you happy. That has happened to both of us. Not necessarily on the same show. Um, the little bloop, bloop, bloop when you make your sound up or down, I always turn those off as well as any um, error notifications. You know, like the little bottle of low sound it makes when you try to do something it doesn't like error notifications. You can turn all of those out. Uh, your computer should make no sound other than the ones that you um, are playing through your system. Mm -hmm. And if you like all those notification sounds, by all means, turn them on again. But before you enter your theater, take them off because it's, 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 the, the sounds are so um, instantly identifiable that if the audience hears the sound of a volume button going up, everyone's going to know what happened. And uh, for, away from your story that for the people that are Mac people, this little Apple dude goes to system preferences. You're going to be visiting that a lot. Sound. Sound effects. Um, see this alert volume here? That's going to be all the way down. Play user interface sound effects. Not today, Charlie. Play feedback when volume is changed. What happens if I do that? See what I'm talking about? Uh, silent running. Cool. <clears throat> okay. 
Okay. It's that, that dreaded time. It's that dreaded time where we lose the, the modicum of goodwill that we have earned so far with this workshop. Yep. I tell you why video is such a bad idea. Mm -hmm. I had to do it anyway. Um, it's artistically disinteresting to watch a slideshow. Unless your whole crux of show is that you're a corporate speaker and it's like sort of comedic like that, you're playing with it. You're like, look at all this stuff. We got stuff and other stuff. Obviously, it's kind of ironic that we're telling you not to do what we are literally doing. But on our way over here, that is to say, five minutes before we started, the projector we did break, we did bring broke. So, not great. Yeah, we are not saying that if you're planning on using video that you're making the wrong decision artistically. What we are saying is that video will guarantee be the most difficult thing that you will deal with in your fringe tech. And unless you think that it is really important to help you tell the story you're trying to tell, and that could be, like, you could have a slideshow. If you're doing a one-person show and you're showing photos that are germane to it, that is 100% valid. That is spectacular storytelling. Photos of my mother, photos of my cancer, Video and it's theater is not inherently bad, but if you're doing it because you think it's a fun thing where it's like, oh, well, this scene takes place in a park, so I'm going to put a projection of a tree behind it, uh, uh, we encourage you to be more creative, think outside the box. Uh, this actually speaks to a larger point about design in fringe. Uh, I am not anti queuing I have done fringe shows in this very space that had hundreds of light views for an hour long piece. I had a and 300 video queue in yeah. the space right next door to here. And it can be done if you know what you're doing, if you come prepared, if you come correct, you can do that. However, there was another piece that we saw last year that was stunningly beautiful. And here's what their lighting design was. They had a single light bulb hanging above the stage that was uh, encased in gnarled wood. They had built a chandelier. Before their show started, they got up on a ladder, they hung it up, they plugged it in. It cast beautiful shadows all around the room. It was stunning, it was strong, it was effective, it did more than a stack of light views could ever do. On top of that, the show extended. It transferred to Wood Lake Theater in Echo Park a couple months later. Took the chandelier, put it up in the air, bam, just as effective. So, you, you can take that show on the bus. You take that show on the bus, yeah. It was like a rug and a stump and a an <laughs> Yeah, everybody grab a thing and get on. So if you're gonna do video, make sure you know why you're doing video. And if you have the chops, if you have uh, After Effects, Motion, Premiere, uh, Avid, any of these things, if you've got all of this in your back pocket, because many of us are actually working in several industries at the same time. I hear there's a really big one down the street. Um, Flip Flint? I don't, know, I don't know what shit you're doing. I don't even know I'm either. I'm not sure what direction this joke is going. Yeah, it's just going south is what's happening. <laughs> um, then by all means dive into it, because if you've got the skills and you've got the stock footage and all the other stuff, and you already know what your content is supposed to look like, drag and drop into QLab. It's really this easy. And now I'm going to be in trouble because I'm going to show you something that I'm working on right now. <laughs> yeah, this is going to get real ugly. Let's see what happens. See? Doesn't like it already because it's, uh, <laughs> it's mirroring. Oh, that's so exciting. See if there's a problem. It'll give you a little red mark and then you just have to figure out how to fix it. Um, would you like to continue? Yeah, well, four ways to fix is this. Um, this is a really good example, uh, completely pre-planned on our account, of why it's important to program before you enter theater. Because had we not been doing this as a deliberate example and instead come unprepared to this workshop, we would be wasting valuable tech time in trying to build this Q file um, when we could have constructed the entire thing ahead of time and loaded in and rolled in. Um, this is complete gibberish to me and very well might be gibberish to you as well. But I've just said that. Darling Corwin has provided a list of uh, links to various adapters that you might need if you're doing video. Probably Thunderbolt to VGA. Uh, Most everybody's VGA. If you don't know what this means and you're planning on using video, you better make sure there's someone on your team who does. Mm -hmm. Don't count on your venue stage manager to know it. Make sure that there's someone in your squad who knows how to connect that to that and throw it up there. We've been talking for about an hour. How about we get to tech? Okay. 
Tech, it's the day of the show, y'all. Um, this is going to be a rapid fire assortment of cool little tips and tricks that you can write down from memory or you can look at our thing. Yeah, either way. Do parking recon. I don't know if you noticed, but it's kind of hard to park around here. If you've been to more than one of these, you will be very aware of that. Um, every space is its own little bunch of secrets, and that changes depending on what hour of the day that you get there. On Saturday nights, it is a bummer to park anywhere near Fringe Central, unless yeah. you get really lucky, which happens. I'm fortunate enough to live off the subway. I can get off the Hollywood Vine and walk up here. You can take Uber and Lyft, especially if you're going to be drinking at Fringe Central, because don't drink and drive, folks. Mm -hmm. uh, there is no excuse that you couldn't find parking and you have to start anything late. Mm -hmm. um, you all know about loading zones? Has anyone not um, been here for longer than six months? Or is just visiting for this festival? The yellow after... loading zones are valid parking spaces after 6 p.m. and on Sundays. My favorite secret. Likewise, green 15 minute zones. Okay. These can be trumped by street signs. So if there's a loading zone and it also says no parking 8 p.m. to such and such, don't get towed. Don't risk it. Um, request that your whole production arrive early. Um, when the doors open to start your tech time, you want to have every single person who's participating in that tech time on the street and accounted for. You should make sure that you've set eyes on every person. Every scenic element that you're planning on loading in, every prop, every costume should be sitting on the street with you. Different venues will have different rules as to where they want you to stand to load in. Some will often actually create a little bit of space with tape or paint or chalk, and they'll create a little box and they'll ask you to stay in there. It is, it is, your, it is uh, your job to figure out how they want you to do that. But you want to make sure you know where everyone is. The last thing you want is to be loading in and say, where's Deborah? Because Deborah is always late to everything. I don't know why we keep casting her. Deborah! <laughs> Damn it, Deborah! Uh, make sure the production before you has finished, before you open the door and dive into the room. Not that that happens to either one of us, but you know, sometimes things get late. There are buffers usually scheduled in spaces, and sometimes shows don't go long. I don't know what that's called. What's the opposite of long? Uh, imaginary. Exactly. I think uh, this again speaks to our point of, of the spirit of the festival is the spirit of sharing and collaboration. If the show that is in the space before you is running long, don't barge in and be a dick. Yes, they are inconveniencing you, they are in the wrong, but talk to your vending manager. Do it through the proper channels, okay? Not that we were picking on the person who literally just walked in when we were talking about walking in. <laughs> Welcome to the party. You're welcome. Uh, uh, lighting prep. How about you take that bit? Lighting prep? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, first thing you should do. All right. So, so before this, I, I, I want to very quickly say that if you are the main producer of your piece, and I know that the way the fringe works is there's often one person who's like doing it all, the, the wearer of many hats. Who here feels like they're the wearer of many hats for their fringe show? Yeah, you yeah, yeah, come you to do. this. Yeah. Push. Awesome. That's what you do. It is fun. It is awesome. It prepares you for nothing in life. <laughs> Be prepared to delegate, you guys. Like, uh, you have to make sure that you trust the people you're with. The less that you have to personally take care of, the better. If you can say, hey, not Deborah, because she's always late to things, but if you can say, I, your name isn't Deborah, is it? Latecomer? <laughs> Catherine, thank God. All right. So find someone in your production you trust and say, hey, I want you to, to oversee loading in all of our props and costumes, please, because I have to go do this. When you get to the venue, the first thing I want you to do is go up to your stage manager and say, hello, my name is Brandon and give them the prompt book and say, is there anything you need from me? Ask them, are you ready to start? Because maybe they're cleaning up a show file or maybe they need to pee in between things. So don't be, don't be too rushy on them. Don't come in hot. Don't come in hot. Introduce yourself, establish a rapport. Let them know that you are the person to whom they should address questions. Let everyone in the room know who they should talk to about what. It will make communication a lot easier. Lighting prep. You introduce yourself to the stage manager. Lay out your plan for the day. Different texts can have different schedules. It is up to you to choose what you want to do. If you have a piece that you have rehearsed for a ton of time, it's maybe something that you've done in a couple other venues and you feel confident that you can load it onto a stage and you're ready to go, then maybe you want to spend a little more time on your tech elements. And you could say, all right, we're here for three hours. I would like to spend the first 15 minutes we're going to load in. The next hour, we are going to spend looking at light and sound cues and doing a Q2Q. And then after that, we are going to um, 
practice one sequence that we need to get correct, and then we're going to load out. Let them know. So they know what to expect. Hey, how about that backup thing I mentioned earlier? How about that backup thing you mentioned? Yeah! Um, I didn't check my phone either, it's fine. Different venues will have different light boards. Most light boards have an option that allows you to save to an external disk. Uh, I believe the majority of the boards in this space are either um, uh, Light Factory or ETC Express. Light Factory saves directly onto the computer's hard drive. Or ETC, thumbstick. ETC Express saves to a floppy disk. If you're saving to a computer's hard drive, bring your own thumb drive. Make a backup. You will never regret having a backup. If you're working <coughs> on a show, uh, on a board that takes a floppy disk, you can still order them online. They are surprisingly valuable for lighting purposes. I don't think anyone uses them but lighting designers these days. Uh, have your own disk. Have your own backup. Even if the venue itself is doing a backup, you're never going to regret having a backup. Uh, I mentioned Q to Q earlier. Does anyone not understand what a Q to Q reversal is? It's Ambiguously the, phrased. It's the one Maybe. that doesn't understand, so we'll explain it. Yeah. Um, That's the one that goes from Q to Q. But it is. A Q to Q rehearsal is a rehearsal where you only rehearse the lighting, sound, video cues. Q this, line. This can also include um, scenic. If you need to rehearse a scene change, if, for example, you need to come on, you need to rearrange the furniture, you can call that cue as well. This does not include any chunks of dialogue or choreography that don't have cues in them. The way that you run a cue to cue is you choose a line a couple beats before the cue is meant to happen at your discretion based on how much time you think you need to ramp into it. So typically a line or two before. And you say, actors, please start at the <coughs> line when I say go. You say go, the actors start at that line. When they get to the place where the cue is called, you call the cue. If the cue functions the way it should, or multiple cues if you're doing lighting, sound, video together, if it all looks good, you say, great, let's move on. If it doesn't, you say, hold, please, adjust the timing, decide I need to call this earlier, I need this volume to be lower, whatever you need, go back, try it again. As soon as that cue looks good, you skip forward. So you're going to say, okay, our next one isn't for another 12 pages, because we have this nice long scene, so let's please go to the end of this scene. Actors, please take it from this point. Actors, go, rehearse the cues. Tech for a fringe show is not the time to reverse non-technical elements. <laughs> Do not make creative changes to the script. Do not reconceive your direction. Spacing, absolutely valid. Mm -hmm. If you've been rehearsing in a space this big and you're performing in a space this big, take a moment to say, hey, you know what, that tableau, I think we need to reposition. That's okay. Anything that you could do in a rehearsal room outside of tech, you should do in a rehearsal room outside of tech. Mm -hmm or a living room, or a parking garage, or the back of someone's aircraft carrier. That's a weird story. Yeah. I'll get to that later. As we said, most venues have uh, stage managers who will also act as lighting programmers. If your venue does not come with a lighting programmer, you should find one, or be prepared to do it yourself. Um, and for either of those, you can feel free to talk to me after uh, if you have questions. Uh, one more lighting note. Test all your lights before you go. This also starts, um, especially at the start of your tech, but also at the start of a performance. Come into the theater. First thing you should do, bring each light up one by one, make sure it comes up. If you have burned out a lamp, there might not be time for the venue manager to swap it out before your show starts. But ideally there is, and if there isn't, you can tell the actors, hey, by the way, that light's not going to be up tonight, so when you do your monologue, take a step this way. It's important to know. It's also important to give the venue a heads up so that they can get it fixed. It is also reasonable to expect your venue to get that fixed by your next performance. If a lamp is out for more than one a day, you have a big problem, you come find me at Fringe Staff and I'll talk to me and I'll go talk to the venue manager. Uh, I forgot to mention I'm also the Hollywood Fringe Staff lighting designer, and so I, um, I take great pride in making sure the venues treat their, um, treat their festival goers well in terms of tech hats. Berwin. Yes. How do I prep my sound? Oh my goodness. You want to make sure when you first arrive that you plug in whatever your sound source is. It can just be your phone if you don't want to travel with your computer for whatever reason. Um, everyone probably has some kind of music on their phone 
or other recorded thing. Best to do it in stereo so you can tell if they've got stereo separation in case you're getting that fancy with the queuing. But um, just plug it in, play it, see how we're looking. That's good. Um, then the next thing you want to do is set a reference level. This is the loudest cue in the show, the absolute loudest thing that it will possibly be. Usually it's a gunshot. And you get that right, and you use that to be your maximum level. Then everything else you set according to that one reference cue. That way you know that when you come in to do your show after four shows have gone with all of the crazy things that they're going to do, you play your one reference cue, and then it's like, bang, that's not very loud. Let's get this up a little bit on the board. Bang! Great, cool. Everything else will be great. Um, left and right, blah, blah, blah. All this other stuff is in here. It's literally just what I said. So what about the run quarter, Brandon? We already touched this once. Yeah. Um, I have uh, a schedule that I put into this document that is my recommendation, which is that you spend your first half hour programming light cues and sound levels. But wait a minute, Brandon. I have to load in all of my stuff. How am I supposed to load in my furniture and program sound cues and light levels at the same time? Well, other figurative Brandon, I'm <laughs> going to have one of my people to whom I have delegated a task oversee the load-in of scenery while I go up to work on light cues. Or I'm going to oversee the load of scenery with my cast while I have the person who I have designated as my light guy go up and deal with lighting. Multitasking is your friend. Uh, so, first half hour, program your light, cap, light cues and set your sound levels. In QLab, you can set your sound levels ahead of time, so you should already make stabs at what sound level you have, so all you're doing is tweaking it in the show box. One hour of run. Um, as I said, if you have a show that is very simple technically, and it's something you've been doing a thousand times and you feel really comfortable for, don't feel obligated to do a run of your show during your tech time. But that is usually a rare case, and I don't think you'll regret doing a run in the space because the next time you're in the space, there's an audience. So make sure that you set time to do a run. Technical notes, deal with any notes, make any changes you have to do. No performance notes, do not give acting notes, do that out on the street or at a bar. Um, Three clubs is just over there, and then for a second, we'll be in that direction. Yeah. Reverse curtain call with tech. This is a stupid thing, but I've seen it happen so many times, not just in fringe shows, in all kinds of productions where they will forget to do the curtain call, and then the first preview, the first time there's an audience, the cast does not know how it works. And so sometimes they don't know there is one, and they don't come on. So just as part of your performance run, rehearse, lights come up, choreograph the curtain call, simple bow, make that part of it. And maybe do a little check on who's going to do your pre-show speech as well. If it's not you, or if there's some other thing, or if you're not doing one, this is often a really great time to throw a shout out to some of your compatriots that you have met throughout the journey. Cross promotion is huge. And giving props to people who you are in this with to help grow audiences and share audiences. If you are doing a benefit for a nonprofit and you would like to let everyone know that you are personally not, collect, not collecting money for the show, you are collecting money for a nonprofit, this is all that stuff that you want to spend at least a little bit of time knocking out. And it's kind of useful to do it in the last few minutes because you'll be there, you'll be like, oh, I got a light for the talking. Cool, great, first cue. Awesome. Everyone have one of these? A phone? Just a phone. Everyone's a phone, right? <laughs> Everyone have a timer app? Set timers. Mm -hmm. Set timers, set multiple timers. Keep yourself on task. You will not believe how quickly this is going to go. Before you know it, you are 30 minutes in and you are still considering where you want your couch to go. Set timers, look at your clock. Have someone designated as the official timekeeping jerk whose job it is to be like, yo, stop it, moving on. You won't regret it. I think you have to take the next one. Um, attitude, you mean? Tell Are me. we into catitude already? Yes. Are we? What's next? I think so. Um, we've already done bribing your stage manager. You just did having someone on the clock. Um, we All right, let's have with phrases delicately. Mm -hmm. um, uh, do your dirty at home. Don't come to the theater to pee. Like seriously, before you come to your tech, pee and poo. Because there's usually not enough. I mean, I'm serious. Like, don't waste time on body stuff when you can do it at home. It, it, I know it's dumb, but you're going to be so grateful that you think of it. Because you're not. You're going to be so hairy to get out the door. Um, 
As we said, tech is not a time for creative changes. If a piece of blocking or directorial choice isn't work, take a note, go fix it in a separate rehearsal space. You will likely be insanely stressed. Like, this is uncomfortable, you may not be used to the experience. Take a moment to step outside, count to 10, or even five, or even just three deep breaths, and calm down. It's worth it to shake it off and then roll back then try to push on, try to push on, try to push on, and dig yourself into that weird hole where you are just working and working and working and working, and it's terrible. Like, people don't really smoke anymore, but smoke breaks, they're huge. Um, yeah, I forget which one of us wrote this, but we're both really saying it. Picture yourself as a cheerleader, not a dictator. <coughs> Believe in your people. Uh, give your fruit bed to the people, and remember that you are doing this because it is fun. Tech is going to be stressful. There's going to be a lot of adrenaline run through your body, but you don't have to do this. You could go and be an accountant somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody talks. If you're going to go absolutely nuclear during tech, for one thing, there's no need for it. Yeah, you don't need to do that. Um, anyway, though. And uh, for another thing, if you're kind of a jerk to people, we find out about it. Everybody, hopefully, gets to meet everybody at French Central seeing other shows on the forums, there's a Facebook group, there's a Twitter hashtag, there are several Twitter hashtags actually, but I need to cover all that here. But treat everyone with kindness. You also never know if it might lead to a job later. Uh, and also, just why not have a positive energy in the room? You know, keep it as positive and make, make a big difference. This one is really, really important to me, and this is at your own discretion, but I really strongly advise that for your tech period, you stay completely sober. Do not <laughs> grab a case of beers for your crew to make things better. Do not smoke a joint. Make it very clear to everyone involved with your show that you are going to show up at tech sober and prepared to work. And again, this is at your discretion. If you really feel like you work better when you've had one beer, you're an idiot, but that's your choice. Um, as someone who has worked with many, many people, I have lost any tolerance for people who are not fully present because they've had, they're inebriated. Science After your tech is over, go to the bar, have fun. Like mm -hmm. you can make a party out of it. You can say we're going to do this, and as soon as it's over, we're all going over there. We're getting we're getting smashed. That's great. Like we love we love booze. Give us whiskey. I'm just saying for your tech, who wants to remain sober? However, just because you can't drink alcohol does not mean you cannot partake of snacks and water. <laughs> find, out, find out what snacks your crew likes and provide water. Um, the Trader Joe's, what is it, 26 cents for the tiny bottle or the, the swallow bottle? Now, you see, personally, I advise that everyone brings a uh, non-plastic re refillable bottle. Mm -hmm. And if you have to provide water, I say you should get one of those big jugs with a spigot rather than individual bottles. Those are at Ralph's. Um, there's a Ralph's just down the street, just down by. Um, I would probably drive, but you can definitely walk it. It'll take you about 10, 15 minutes, depending on how fast you go. Find out what kind of snacks people like. You know, do a little count and say who likes what, bring some chips. I find it's usually, here's what I always do. I always do a mix of healthy and non-healthy snacks because everyone says, you know, get me something healthy. So I get some nuts, and I get some grapes, and I get some fried jackfruit, and I get some good quinoa pops, and I get one bag of popcorn, and that's the thing that everyone eats. So, you know, like, it's, it's going to happen. I, I do recommend that you try to eat healthy food during your fringe tech experience. For me personally, I find that my brain works better when I've had good fuel. And so, yes, of course, you want some indulgence, and snacks are great, but, you know, try to, try to take good care of your body, I guess, in general leading into your tech experience so that you're really top of your game when you jump in there and start working. This is a preparatory thing. Um, everyone's process is a little different, but it's strongly advised, much like anything here. No one is allowed to leave tech for any reason. It's going to be only a couple hours. You're gearing up for it. You can beat the drum with your cast. If you're doing a one-person show, you can beat the drum by yourself. And just make sure everyone's clear about the fact that we only have this much time to do this. That said, I did mention the thing about taking a break and shaking it off. This is also critical. Your mileage may vary. Yeah, I think the important thing is know where everyone is at all times. You just don't want to have a moment where you're like, okay, we need Deborah now. Oh, God damn it, Deborah! Deborah! So, damn it! Um, leave the space cleaner than you found it. 
Uh, so we already talked about um, on stage, if you have anything that needs to be cleaned up. This also counts for backstage, though, mm -hmm. which is that anything that you load in, costumes and stuff, chairs, it's a really nice courtesy for the people who walk in to leave a cleaner. So if there's like an empty soda can that someone left from the show before, you just throw it out. <coughs> you know, take good care of the space. Uh, as everyone together can make the space a more pleasant place to work in. Think about the bigger picture. Design is an important thing. Do that, whatever. It's cool. But what is the most important part of your show? Make sure you have that. It's probably the performance. And so you probably don't want to do anything to damage that. So whenever possible, take stock. Um, it's kind of handy to check all of your lists a couple times. I want to go into the kitchen sink. Okay. Um, the kitchen sink is my least favorite impulse. Um, it was born out of the sort of American descent into hyper-realism, where you will throw everything, including multiple kitchen sinks, on stage to create a Manhattan apartment for everyone to watch, because everyone in LA is fascinated with Manhattan apartments, apparently. Um, this is awesome and wonderful for people who are well-connected with prop shops, who have money to burn and know where St. Vincent's is, or just absolutely have to have 400,000 Kinder Eggs on stage <laughs> in a very specific array. This could be super dope, and I'm super happy if you can pull it off. You'll probably need extra people. If there is more stuff that fits in your car, you're probably going to need an extra person to help you load in and load out. You also probably need none of it. None of it. The kitchen sink is usually there to give more character to the play than the characters are giving to the play. Trust your work. Bums me out. Really trust your work. Um, if you're doing something that you're proud of, let the, speak, let's, let the piece speak for itself. Take a moment to really do an inventory of the actual design needs for your piece. We are not saying that you shouldn't have a bookshelf with books on the stage. If it is important to your storytelling, absolutely, you should do anything you want. But realize that this is fringe, and the expectations of an audience coming to a fringe show, everyone understands the parameters of the festival. They are not expected to be transported to the inside of the submarine with scenic design. You know? So what do you need to do that? Is it like a single piece of card, like cardboard circular represents a porthole? Find a, find a clever way to tell your story. And work smarter, not harder? What's the? I don't work. Does anyone know what the idiom is? Work smarter, <laughs> not yeah. 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 Harder. harder. Okay. And always, when you do your next production, you can add all the cool stuff then. When you have your put down, when someone really likes what you're doing, you can be like, ooh, I'm finally going to get that Ferrari on stage. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, remember why you're doing what you're doing. You are a part of the largest arts festival in the West United States. Hollywood Fringe Festival is so great. There's a reason that we do it every year. Uh, I have hashtag Fringe the Burning Man. It's a great thing, and you're going to have fun. The only thing that's going to keep you from having fun in the Fringe Festival is yourself. So if something is really stressing you out, think about why is it stressing you out? How can I make this not stress me out? The bar is over there, yeah. and also that way. If you don't have to drink, you can come visit me or Brendan and say, I'm having the worst day. And I'll um, be like, that's awesome. My hair is on fire, but please talk to me. Corwin is a big advocate of drinking, and I'm not going to poo poo drinking. We both really <laughs> like whiskey, you guys. However, I will also say uh, I really enjoy uh, taking advantage of uh, LA's hiking and beaches. And I find that in the middle of the Fringe Festival, it sometimes helps to just get out and be in nature for an hour. Um, keep yourself mentally healthy so that you can be physically destructive. <laughs> Self care. Um, the last page of our document that you will read uh, is an inventory list where Corwin has provided a um, list of links to various websites, a lot of Amazon pages where you can find various adapters, um, floppy disks, things that you might need to purchase. The list is all right there. Um, and they all link to Amazon share links, which is exactly the item that it links to. I uh, checked that today at the Oyster, <laughs> which if you don't know what that is, and you are not vegan or vegetarian, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> oh, man. There's so much good food around the Hollywood Fringe It's insane. Uh, so that is our prepared spiel. And now we would like to open it up to a Q&A. 
Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, just on the subject of lighting, have mm -hmm. you ever heard uh, any feedback about people using their PCs for lighting control or their own lighting based PC based concepts? Uh, you mean like Light Factory? Light Factory, uh, chances of lighting. I think that that is a spectacular idea. What I would recommend is that you test the DMX connection before your tech loading because if there's a chance that they are using analog cameras that don't have a DMX, or they might have a DMX system that just doesn't take signal. I have unfortunately encountered this with non-fridge gigs where I have programmed my entire show file in blind on my laptop. I show in, plug it in, and it won't speak to the dimmers. So I think that if you have if you have the know-how to do that, it's a really smart way to do it and save time, but test it ahead of time. Um, there's a Mac one, too, that's completely free. Uh, the only problem is you need a dongle, uh, USB to uh, DMX. I think the cheapest those go for now are 80 bucks, and you get what you pay for it. But um, you can get those on, I think they even sold them on Amazon, or Musician's Friend. Yeah, uh, and text the best one. There's a cheaper one that's like something weird. Yes, sir. Is there a, uh, just based on your past experience, uh, patterns that presentations have in terms of when they arrive, or when they start to line up? Um, uh, yeah, typically people stack their show schedules. And so that means that, that people often see two or three shows in a row, which means that they're going to get out of one and have five minutes to get over to you. So don't panic if 10 minutes before your show, no one's there. People usually show up a minute before. Hi, I'm Cal with Big Show, uh, the, the Big Snake, I'm sorry. Um, we're having live music and cues done from the stage. And this is my first time doing that in a straight play. You know, so I'm, I've been considering the technician that the orchestra. <coughs> But he'll have all the sound cues programmed into it and doing it from behind the actors. So do you have any tips or any advice? That is awesome. I'm such a fan of you in general because also we have done a show together already. Yeah. No. Warren's brilliant. <laughs> no, seriously, I never did a sound design. I never had a show sound design. And we walk in, he goes, there's a swamp fan that's going to be running through the whole thing. I'm like, are you out of your fucking mind? But in my head, it was genius and, and he is really amazing and was there every night, same day we opened, teching and re-teching and changing. So if you get to work with him, it was one of the highlights of my last year. I just wanted to say that I think Corbin's entirely mediocre, but that said, do you have any, <laughs> do you have any uh, suggestions, uh, any tips for... Yeah, is anyone else doing live music? Uh, awesome. Uh, are uh, anyone doing backing tracks, karaoke style, where they started and sing along? Uh, that's one thing that people do. Um, the greatest tradition of sound design is the musicians in the back of the audience, uh, in the back of the performances and stuff, or the actors themselves. Anybody saw the Sweeney Todd where they played their own instruments that just did on the big tour? It was awesome. Um, set it up a couple of different times in the garage and time your setup and breakdown. Um, try to have a backup. Where, check this out and get yeah. something on yeah, one of the devices. They school me this today. Is it like an Akai sampler or something? No, the Q, the, the Q Lab? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty great. We do that like all over town on a variety of different shows. And the cool thing is it can be super groovy because everything is on stage in front of you. And the stage manager is just like, oh, lights up. Right. I feel like it would probably behoove you to also scout out um, wall outlets around the stage. Yes. You anything plugging in on stage. And this, this also goes if you have any kind of table lamp, any device that needs power. Make sure you know where it's going to plug in. Make sure that you have an extension cord. And um, if you're doing a how to tech workshop, orange extension cords are a okay. If you're doing a piece of theater, you might want to look into getting a black extension cord. Mm -hmm. And you can get those at Home Depot. Yes. There's a little note about on stage power in this house. Um, no can do, basically. The, the whole building is right at the limit of what the power company will deliver to it. And you can blow your, <coughs> up your whole show. With and that speaks to the importance of doing uh, basic recon before you load. Mm -hmm. Who else? Down here, yes. Fight it out. I don't know. Oh, this might be a dumb question, but if you have gels that you have to change, is that possible to be able to do that? Uh -huh. in the okay. Uh, it is very unlikely that your venue will you allow you to do that because when you change gel, there's a possibility of accidentally bumping the light out of focus. 
it is something that you have to negotiate with your venue itself. Some venues, I have not seen this around Hollywood, I've seen this in New York, some venues will have designated specials, which you can focus any way you want in your 15 minute load, and you can hop up a ladder and aim it, and you can drop a gel down. Otherwise, probably not. Some venues, however, have LEDs that are color changing, so you might be able to get colors that way. Questions? Yes, that's how. Uh, just a basic question, which might again be a stupid question. No the, stupid questions. Um, is the is the link for the Google Drive going to be on the Fringe site, or where is it? Yes. Okay. <coughs> It'll be tweeted. We'll and get it up there everything. Yeah. Yes. Uh, is there like in your documents a place where I can find like the vocabulary that you use for the Chromebook? Because like. I would just put just lights on and lights off. Mm -hmm. It's all fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. And if you have any problems, you can tweet one of us from the link, or our information is literally everywhere. Yeah. So uh, if you get really stuck, you can check in with us. I, I don't think that you actually need to use a specialized vocabulary. I think that your, your not knowing the, the special lingo will be advantageous, because you want it to be as easily communicated as possible. So you don't have to say, you know, 50% fade up, you know, color palette three, you know, block update. You just say, lights, lights get brighter. Okay. You, you want the state, you want anyone reading it to understand what you mean. So don't, don't obfuscate. Feel free to write it the way that makes sense to you. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm doing a show, uh, Vincent Deconstructed about Van Gogh. Mm. So, uh, still projections of his works are essential to the storytelling. And since I've never done that before, do those go just in as regular light cues, or do you have to run a whole other test set like you would for video? It's uh, probably best to have the cues separate so that you have like a punch list to make sure you get it done. But they all get put together in the prompt book at right. the times. Um, the reason it's nice to have separate cue sheets of each thing is that you can track them while you're doing cue to cue and then when you finish the production, you put it to bed here and you've suddenly decided I'm going to New York, you have a record of everything that's meticulous. Mm -hmm. So it's great for the setup and it's great for the takedown and then the setup again. Um, if, if you don't have a ton of cues, you could, you, you could potentially put it all in one document. You can make a separate column for light, sound, video, and so you could number them in the column, or if you're using Excel or Google Sheets, you can create a separate sheet so it's all contained in the same document, but different sheets for each list. Questions? Any other questions? Hi, um, I'm doing, uh, hello, I'm doing a 90 minute piece, and I don't know if you, if you guys cover this, I, I should have played, I apologize, um, but is the amount of tech time that we get determined by our own venue, or is everyone getting the same amount of tech time regardless of it's determined by the amount of time that you negotiate, okay. your venue, which is often based on the amount of time that you the uh, length of the What's the rule of thumb? The rule of thumb is usually uh, twice the length, or uh, no, usually three times the length of your show. So if you're doing a one-hour show, it's it's safe to get a three-hour tech. Cool. Although you might get a two. So uh, yes. Could you sort your PPL loads up to after 6 p.m. Sundays? And Sundays. Anytime, anytime. anytime Sunday. Okay, what about Saturday? Nope. Okay. Saturday after 6 p.m. Oh, Saturday after Monday through Saturday. Monday through Saturday after 6 p.m. Sunday is all day. Okay. But beware, there is also the commercial loading zone. White zone is no good. Yeah, there's a slight difference there. It's just plain yellow and always check the sign too. Because there's actually a really sweet spot right up front, yeah. which is fought over. Usually we come in. Like sometimes they come in so people can just zoom up. This is all stuff you do in parking recon. Um, yeah. I have a secret space and I and I will not tell you where it is. <laughs> Everyone knows about Lyft with a Y and Uber, right? With a U. These are apps you can get for your phone that you can call a ride share service and someone will pick you up and you can give them the address to the next place and go that way. If you haven't used it yet, your first one, they'll usually give you a $25 coupon, which uh, is usually enough for a good free ride. And then both uh, both apps, if you share it with other people who haven't used it, both of you get a coupon. So potentially, if you keep introducing it to uh, other people to the app, you can keep riding for free. Mm -hmm. 
And there's usually deals, um, you'll see cards with a pink mustache for Lyft. Uh, I can make it to East LA from here um, on the east side of downtown for like 20 bucks, I think. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're just getting around fringe, it can kind of be pretty useful. If you're not traveling far, too, if you're kind of in Hollywood or Central, there's the bus system on Santa Monica is really, really good. Mm -hmm. I used yeah. it all last summer. Yeah, I, I, um, I really make an effort to take my car as little as possible. So either I'll come at the beginning of the day, park my car, and I will just walk and take public transport until I'm done, or I will take a subway or lift over here. Uh, parking is, is going to be the most typical part of the festival. Mm -hmm. So just prepare for it, <laughs> find alternates. Uh, any other questions? If you live in the valley, you can park at the uh, NoHo Red Line station, and that's super awesome because it'll drop you off either Hollywood and Highland or what's the what's the line one? Sunset and Vine. Uh, Hollywood and Vine. Hollywood and Vine. That's the one that I take. Yeah, yeah. Hollywood and Vine. You walk down Vine, you're right here. You can park in the Universal Studios lot as well. Yeah, I didn't know that. that. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions about how to take to a fringe show? No? Everyone happy? Yeah! Awesome! Go yeah. Fridge! Uh, hopefully you guys feel enabled from watching this, uh, watching this workshop. You guys feel able to go out there and uh, get your tech on. Again, we encourage you to go wild. Your only limit is your own ability. <laughs> and where will you be right after this, Brandon? Well, we're going to be at three clubs, having more office hours, and having drinks, and, and feeling free to chat up, and, and um, I'm, this is the first year in, I think, three that I'm not producing my own piece, so I'm really yeah. excited to actually come see everyone's work. Yeah. So, thank right you guys on. for coming out. Thanks. See you down there in a second.